Well, welcome back to chapter 16, the book of Leviticus. We're going to get into uh, the Day of Atonement now. This is a different holiday, different type of day than normal days that they're supposed to do every year in the fall time, typically when it happened. So let's learn more about this. So this is how and when Aaron must enter the holy places explained. Sacrifices are offered to reconcile Israel to God. The scapegoat carries away the sins of the people. Interesting, we're going to learn about that. The sins of all Israel are forgiven on the Day of Atonement. So verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. So that says this revelation is given in this after this event happened. If you remember uh, Nadab and Abihu, if I remember right, a couple chapters ago, they offered a sacrifice and they used fire that wasn't from the holy altars. They used fire from somewhere else. It was called a strange fire uh, in the scriptures. And they were burned to death, basically, because of it. God sent a fire down and burned them. Uh, so this came after that. So that we have context around when this revelation was received. Verse 2, And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, and that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. So he's saying, look, you need to, we need to give Aaron some guidelines as to when he can't, he can't just come into the Holy of Holies anytime he wants. There's rules here. So we're establishing those rules uh, so that Aaron doesn't die. Thus, and this is verse 3, Thus Aaron shall come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat. He shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and shall be girded with a linen girdle. With the linen miter shall he be attired. These are holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. Now this is linen clothing. This is not the clothing of the high priesthood, which is the ephod. Remember the plate that had the 12 stones on it and the, the, uh, the miter, the hat basically had the, the uh, gold plate right here with the writing on it, holiness to the Lord. It's not all of that stuff. This is different. Okay, on the Day of Atonement, he comes in dressed in white linen, just white clothes. There's a couple layers there. And uh, he, after he washes himself, so there's a, a washing, probably an anointing that goes first. Then he's prepared to put on the holy garments and get ready so that he is washed clean and sanctified, ready to go. Now he can perform these ordinances and go into the Holy of Holies uh, to, to do this. And he's taking with him, uh, let's see, that was up here a little bit uh, earlier, a ram, a young bullock for sin offering and a ram for burnt offering. All right, so verse 5, And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. So that's the first bullock, the sin offering. Verse 7, He shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots, Upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord, the other lot for the scapegoat, basically. So casting lots is kind of like rolling dice. Okay, evens it's this guy, odds it's this one. Basically, is kind of what it's what it is. Uh, verse nine: And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. So that goat gets offered up as a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. So this is where starting to get where that idea of a scapegoat comes from. Okay, we hear that a lot sometimes in movies and things. Oh, that was he was the scapegoat. You know, that's what your role was is basically the scapegoat is the person who gets blamed for everything so that you don't get blamed for it basically. And that's kind of what it is. So we're going to get into a little bit more details on this and talk about this. Interesting thing here, the word, Hebrew word for scapegoat is azazel. Fascinating. We're going to talk about that here in just a minute. Uh, verse 11, and Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house. 
shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. So he's, he gets a cup, gets his cup, basically censer, puts a bunch of coals in it, and then takes it in there to the veil, puts a bunch of incense on it so it burns the incense and it creates this cloud around the mercy seat that helps protect Aaron from seeing the Lord, basically. Uh, so he doesn't die in the Lord's presence. All right, verse 14, he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood of his finger seven times. So he's in the Holy of Holies doing this, okay, in front of the mercy seat. Uh, then he, sh verse 15, then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. Uh, 16, he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions and all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. So this is the, again, we're, we're, this is the day of atonement. So it's a special day to do an extra sacrifice to help really understand that we need the atonement to help us. And we are pleading for the atonement to be there so that, that it can help us basically. Verse 17, there shall be no man in the tabernacle of congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord and make an atonement for it and shall take of the blood of the bullock and the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. He shall sprinkle the blood uh, upon it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and hallow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. Uh, so this is, let's just pause right there for a second. So he takes these, he goes in uh, to the Holy of Holies. So nobody else is in the tabernacle. He does the, the offering with the, with the bullock and the one goat for sin offering. So the bullock is for him and his house. The goat is for all of Israel to talk about the, the need of the atonement. And we need, we're, you know, we're in a way pleading for God to bring us the atonement to, to help us. And so he does that. Then he goes out and he finishes outside with the blood on the altar and things there as well to, to finish that off. And then people can start coming in. Uh, verse 20, when he hath made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. So this is the second goat, the scapegoat that we're going to learn about right here. So he's, he's done the atonement offering. Basically, so at pleading with God to please help us with our sins by sprinkling on the mercy seat and doing that, realizing God will take care of our sins and we need him to help us take care of our sins. All right, verse 21, and Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited. And he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. This is the scapegoat. We're going to transfer our sins to him and he's going to leave. So he gets punished and dealt with, not us. That's a scapegoat. That's what it is. So what's fascinating, if you remember, we talked about this. The Hebrew word for a scapegoat is azazel, okay? Uh, which is interesting because Ezazel is also the name of the devil. So one commentator uh, made this comment here. He says, he explained the significance of Azazel by saying that it represented the devil himself, the head of the fallen angels, who was afterwards called Satan. For no subordinate evil spirit could have been placed in antithesis to Jehovah as Azazel is here, but only the ruler or head of the kingdom of demons. Uh, this is in Commentary in the Old Testament, uh, Book 1, the Pentateuch, the third book of Moses. So uh, it's it's just interesting. They brought the two goats in. One gets killed to pay for the price of sins. The other sins are transferred to and then kicked out. 
So very, I, I think that's really kind of cool, the whole idea of, of the war in heaven, basically. Satan and his followers go that way. Christ goes, does his thing, and atones for us. Uh, you know, world and God, worldliness and godliness kind of thing. There's that separation. We need to push away the worldliness, push away the sins, get rid of all that, and focus on the atonement of Jesus Christ and what it what he has done for us. Uh, really interesting symbolism that they come in here. Put, if you have comments or thoughts on this, what does that bring up to your mind? Put that in the comments. We'd love to hear them. All right, verse 23, And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garments and he, and he which he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there. And he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place, put on his garments and come forth and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people. So this, the, he has special clothing he uses to go into the Holy of Holies. He takes those off. He cleanses himself. He puts on the normal uh, temple garments or temple robes that he wears. And then he goes out to do more officiating in the rest of these offerings, the burnt offerings. Uh, let's see. And the fat of the sin offering shall he burn upon the altar. It's verse 25. He that... And he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward come into the camp. So even he, he just to make sure there's no, no sins are coming back. He's not bringing any unclean thing in. He has to cleanse himself before he can come back in to the society as well. Uh, verse 27, and the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place, shall one carry forth without the camp, and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh, and they're done. And he that burneth them shall wash his clothes, bathe his flesh in water, and afterwards shall come into the camp. So there's extra purifying going on, showing all uncleanness out. Out. This is the day of atonement. Verse 29, This shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls, and do no work at all, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you that ye may clean, be clean from all your sins before the Lord. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. Now, afflict your souls doesn't necessarily mean hurt yourself or, or things like that, but you need to be contrite and humble brokenhearted on this day. It's a very sacred, special Sabbath day, basically. Uh, verse 32, And the priest whom he shall anoint and whom he shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office in his father's stead shall make the atonement and shall put on the linen clothes, even the holy garments. He shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation and for the altar. And he shall make an atonement for the priests and for all the people of the congregation. This shall be an everlasting statute unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. So this was a, a holiday, sort of. It's kind of a day to really focus on the atonement in Christ and come clean, get all the sins taken care of, and be right with God, basically. So very, very important. Kind of like, th this is kind of like what we have for uh, baptism. When we are washed clean, pronounced clean through baptism, it's kind of a similar idea. Uh, but instead of having to do it once a year, we partake of the sacrament, which is the emblems of the sacrifice of the Savior. And that helps us to remember our covenants and renew those covenants and say, yes, I will do better this week. I will do better. And we keep working on being better at honoring our end of the bargain with God, our covenant, and he will take care of his as well. So thanks for watching and we'll talk to you in the next chapter.